It's Monday, August 21st, 2023, and I'm Dave Sobel. Three things to know today. Understanding inflation, wages, and e-commerce trends, a comprehensive analysis across the US, UK, and China. Decoding the MSP, Ken Alice unveils the true landscape of managed services in their 2023 report. And AI-generated artwork cannot be copyrighted, a US judge rules in a landmark decision. This is the business of tech. Your clients are looking for proactive cyber resilience and you to be their virtual chief information security officer to assess their security posture, enhance compliance readiness, and reduce their cyber risk. Want to do that at scale? Sonomi's AI-driven vCISO platform helps managed service providers and consulting firms make their customers cyber resilient. Try it today. Visit Sonomi.com and book a demo. Tell them you heard about it on the Business of Tech. That's C-Y-N-O-M-I dot com. Let's start our week with another review of the state of play. Recent data suggests that the U.S. economy is accelerating with early gross domestic product estimates, indicating that the economy is revving rather than slowing down. The latest Consumer Price Index data suggests that inflationary pressures in the U.S. are easing, yet the numbers remain above the Federal Reserve's desired 2% threshold. The CPI rose 3.2% year-over-year in July, with shelter costs accounting for more than 90% of the monthly inflation. The core CPI, excluding volatile components like food and energy, rose by 0.2% over the month, translating to an annual rate of 4.7%. The data offers mixed sentiments for economic analysts and policymakers, with some predicting that the Federal Reserve will stop raising the interest rate soon. The Adobe Digital Price Index has shown a decline in online prices for 11 consecutive months, with most categories experiencing year-over-year price reductions. Small business owners, especially those with online storefronts, should pay attention to this trend as it can impact market positioning and inventory decisions. The report offers a key takeaway, adaptability and staying informed about market trends in the dynamic e-commerce landscape. A new paper from the Cleveland Fed economist suggests that the ultra-tight labor market that helped define the COVID-19 recovery may not explain soaring wage growth after all. Instead, the economists conclude that rapid wage growth in recent years is, quote, largely due to the pass-through of higher inflation since the pandemic, which reflects higher compensation for a higher cost of living. Across the pond, the UK is struggling with stubborn inflation, with the headline annual inflation rate at 6.8% in July and the core measure, excluding energy and food, at 6.9%. The service sector inflation rose by 7.4% in the year through July, and the UK wages grew 7.8% in the second quarter compared to the same period a year ago. And while we're thinking broadly, the Washington Post warns that bad economic news coming out of China should be watched closely, as a downturn there could have unpredictable global effects and shape Beijing's foreign policy decisions. Poor retail sales, the housing market, industrial output and investment, cutting rates, hiding some jobless numbers, and reduced growth forecasts are all concerning signs. The risk for the global economy is that a prolonged spell of weak demand in China could hold back growth elsewhere by blunting exports of iron ore, crude oil, factory equipment, and luxury goods. Why do we care? Listeners in the UK will be experiencing a different market than the US, and I wanted to acknowledge that with the data. That said, China will impact both markets. The differing inflation matters, particularly considering the link of inflation to the labor market doesn't change the execution of labor plans, but understanding helps. I wanted to note the digital price index trend, which is notable for those serving SMBs. It's data to advise your customers. 
Canals has launched the 2023 Channel Ecosystem Landscape, which includes 233 companies providing automation and digital capabilities for channel partner and alliance ecosystems. The report notes 14 companies driving over $100 million in channel software revenue, 25 companies found in the past five years, and 80% of companies headquartered in the U.S. The full report is available on the Canalis website. New research suggests that the growth of managed services may be exaggerated, with only 11% of channel partners being true MSPs. The term MSP is being used inaccurately, with vendors using it to target growth and increase recurring revenue. Canalis classifies MSPs as channel partners making over 50% of their revenue from IT managed services. Managed services revenue reached $202 billion in the Americas in 2022, with the U.S. generating the largest revenue at nearly $181 billion. And despite headwinds in the IoT market, IT service providers remain critical to successful deployments. While monetizing some segments of IoT has been difficult, vendors, operators, and IT service providers continue to launch new services, make acquisitions, and form alliances to improve their capabilities. The global IoT market reached approximately $675 billion in 2023 and will grow to $1.3 trillion by 2027, with an expected CAGR of 15% from 2022 to 2027. The largest verticals by revenue in 2027 will include the government and public sector, manufacturing, energy, transportation, and logistics. Why do we care? I'm increasingly not a fan of using MSP as a term because it's become so overloaded. It's gone the root of cloud. That said, just like cloud, the core value hasn't changed, as we see in the markets we examine. The core value of helping customers with their technology needs is sticking around. A U.S. District Court judge has ruled that AI-generated artwork cannot be copyrighted, stating that, quote, human authorship is a bedmark requirement of copyright. The ruling came in response to a lawsuit against the U.S. Copyright Office after it refused to grant copyright to Stephen Thaler for an AI-generated image made with a creativity machine algorithm he'd created. The judge acknowledged that artists will use AI as a tool to create new work, creating challenging questions regarding how much human input is necessary to copyright AI-created art. Oregon has become the 12th state in the U.S. to enact comprehensive data privacy legislation with the signing of the Oregon Consumer Privacy Act, or OCPA. OCPA applies to any person that conducts business in Oregon and controls or processes the personal data of either at least 100,000 Oregon residents or at least 25,000 Oregon residents while deriving at least 25% of its revenue from the sale of personal data. The OCPA lacks several common exemptions found in other state privacy laws and has various unique definitions. The law will go into effect on July 1st, 2024. Tech lobbyists have been successful in influencing state privacy laws in the U.S., according to a Politico analysis. The report found that the tech industry has won a series of victories in 11 states, with lawmakers enacting bills that bear hallmarks of lobbying influence. The industry has been pushing through industry-friendly laws and successfully watering down any legislation that would impose stronger privacy protections. The tech lobby's success in the states has also changed its calculus in D.C., with lobbyists spending less time and money on Congress. Why do we care? Well, the U.S. Copyright Office had taken that position, which will be critical insight for AI users. It's a tool to help, not an independent solution that stands on its own. When framed this way, the path to customer success seems relatively straightforward. The legislation game is happening at the state level, and that disparate approach is significantly more challenging for customers and privacy advocates. For providers, it makes consulting and advising particularly complex. Eureka Process is now a Gazinta company. Eureka Process, the consulting team focused on you streamlining your MSP, is now part of Gazinta. The SaaS company focused on empathy and getting shit done quickly and correctly. What does that mean? 
First, Gazinta Mobius customers will get even better customer support for their products. The Eureka team will be looking at ways to deliver better customer support and give their thoughts on how to make the products better. It also means that you can come to Kazinta for more of your consulting needs when you want to own a business, not be owned by your business. Process Consulting will give you the freedom you need. Visit gazinta.com slash Eureka to learn more. Thanks for listening. There was a leak of CMMC 2.0. We're going to dive into what was in it in an event on Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern on LinkedIn, YouTube, or Facebook, and all the links in the show notes. And for those Stitcher listeners, remember, it's going away at the end of the month. Make sure to switch your platforms to one of the other podcast platforms. Talk to you again tomorrow. The Business of Tech is written and produced by me, Dave Sobel, under ethics guidelines posted at businessof.tech. Like the content? Support the show at patreon.com slash MSP radio or buy our Why Do We Care merch at businessof.tech. If you want to reach our listeners, visit mspradio.com slash engage. Part of the MSP Radio Network.